This is taken from Aranya Khan of Iran three months. And it is with a meeting of Sevari and Iran. But I want to give you an introduction as to how Sevari ended up there. Sevari was from a tribal family. And they were looked upon as, in those days, the class system was kind of heavy. And they were looked upon as kind of goofy. <laughs> so, Sevari had reached the age about 10 years. In those days, the girl she was married at a very early age. But she didn't understand that. So her father, on the eve of the wedding, he had a big feast. And they were killing all these animals and making preparations. And she is listening. She is listening. These animals are undergoing such agony and pain. And she can't understand that. So she goes to the father's Pitaji, what is happening? She says, well, my daughter, you are getting married. And it's a festive occasion and so And we are having a big feast and so So then she understands what was happening. So she went back and told herself, how come a wedding is a situation where I must be very happy? But with my happiness, these small animals are meeting their death. They are suffering. They are agonizing with pain. How can I be happy? How can my life be successful when because of me, so much pain is being imparted? And she left and she ran away. And she went into the forest of Hilda. And there was an ashram. And that ashram was conducted by a great and long sage, Matan Rishi. But in those days, they were not women, you know, of these tribes, they were not allowed to go into the temple. So she went and she stayed around the temple, and she looked and observed what was taking place. She listened to the discourse and everything. And when morning would break, and they would always attendants would go to take a bath and so she would come inside the room and she would arrange everything neat and nice and organized. So they found a strain when they came back that they didn't leave the place like this. How come the place like this? And then it happened on a few occasions. So one day they decided to remain and see what was happening. Who is this person to do this? And lo and behold, they observed that Siri came and she organized everything. And my third machine included her in the temple. They were in the place, you know. Here was a person who is deeply devoted and they kept her in the mother. But sometime after, you know, all the attendants left and it was she and the guru alone, Mother Rishi. And Mother Rishi was about to leave the earthly day to move the heavens. Because his job on earth had been completed. And these wishes, they know what purpose they have come for. And when they fulfill their purpose, then they take their leave. And he told Sarah, he said, Sarah, I'm going to give you my time myself. And she was very, very distraught. She said, My guru, you are the only one who I know. I don't know anybody else. What will I do in your absence? And then he tells her, he says, Siri, keep on doing what you have been doing, so this is the step. And one day, Ram will come your way. So, Madame left, and she continued the service in the temple. And every day, she would knit up and clean and sweep the place and so on. And she would go and pick the fruits and flowers and conduct her devotion. And she was already looking out because she says one day he didn't say when Sri Ram will come. So she can look in the distance when when Sri Ram will come. And when she doesn't see Sri Ram, she goes to the altar and she offers 
applause and fruits and zooms around us. That is a depth of devotion. You know? So she kept on looking day after day. And then she would pick the fruits and so on. And she would taste them to ensure that I will give my Lord the sweetest fruits when he comes. So she tasted them. And she would have a basket. And in that basket she would put all the sweetest, the delicious fruits. And she would keep it. And then when the Lord would not come again, she would offer it. And when she became very old, then she looked at this and said, so strong that she would come in. Now, what I want to let you know is, Shuram came when she became very old. She was a young girl, 10, that's his 10, 11, all right? And she made a man, Shuram came, she was very old. I don't know if you see a picture of it. And I don't know Peter, right? <laughs> but what I tell you is, that she never gave up. She continued her service all through those years, waiting for Shuram. She never gave up. And that is a hallmark of a great and profound devotee. A true devotee does not give up regardless whether he gets pain or pleasure. He doesn't give up. He continues the service. And she lived in the hope that I should now welcome because the words that I do cannot fall short. So this day, when she looked in the distance, she saw Shuram. And, you know, she swept the pathway all the time. Every day she would sweep the pathway. Sometimes she would roll on the pathway to ensure that there is no object that would cause harm or bodily injury when the Lord walks. That is the nature of her devotion. The depth of her devotion. And lo and behold, when she looked in the distance, she saw she ran that she was walking. And it occurred to her, he said, this is what my guru was saying. That one day, Shuram will come. That day has come. And Shuram came, and she felt the feet, and she bowed in reverence. But she was so, but probably happy. But at that moment, she couldn't talk, she couldn't speak. She became speechless to be in the presence of the divine. Oh, my prayers have been answered. Here is the Lord my presence. She couldn't speak, but she just bowed to his feet. And then, after some time, she took both of them in the ashram. And she washed their feet and performed their puja and so on. And gave them the second the mood of her. You know, roots, bottom, and fruits. She offered them. And she ran at them. And he said, Oh, Siri, this is the sweetest fruits that I have in this. But I want to bring to you another dimension of this. There is something called the philosophy, the philosophical teachings, which are referred to as esoteric means. Esoteric means of a higher value. You know, the deeper meaning. The deeper spiritual meaning of them. So when you read the scriptures, you have a layman's interpretation for the modern man to understand. That's how Tuchilas wrote this Roman. But there is an inner meaning to this. Now, in each of us, there is that basket of fruit. We have all been born with that. And in that basket of fruit, we have sweet fruits like fruit purity, sincerity, compassion, and things like that. All the positives. And in that basket there are also sour fruits of hate, greed, lust, anger, ego, etc. etc. We all born with that. Now, Siri tasted the fruit and she got rid of what was bitter. How do we taste the fruits of love, of hate, of greed, and anger, etc.? We taste it by our experiences. 
You see, the fruit is a little. The fruit is the year. The oil was there is heat, lust, anger, greed. There is love, compassion, devotion, etc., etc. In all of us. So, Sarahy, I want you to understand this, and this is most important. Sarahy, she tasted and then she threw away the bad food. How do we know? How do we know something is bad? When you get angry, when you get angry, that's a, a bad food. But what happens? When you get angry, you lose your power of discrimination. You begin to say things that you regret afterwards. You experience this. That is how you taste it. So you taste anger. Anger is not good. Jealousy. If I'm jealous of someone, I will do all kinds of things to bring down that person. I will lie against that person. I will tell the truth. I will tell people all kinds of things to make them hate this person. That is not so. That is a bad food. I should get rid of that. And then you have compassion. Somebody is very poor. They don't have food. And then you bring some food, they take them to your home, you feed them, they give them more food and food and so on. You see a big smile in the person's face. How do you feel that? How do you feel that is the experience? You taste that experience. That you bring joy and happiness to this person. So I should always be compassionate. I should always be loving and kind. So you can't get up and say that you know from tomorrow I won't be angry. It doesn't work. Throughout the process of our life, we have to keep on throwing out of the basket of our mind, of our hearts, the hate, the greed, the lust, the anger. And that takes a lifetime. When did Sarah when did she run up Sarah? When she became very old. By then, her basket was filled only with love, bhakti, devotion, truth, sincerity, purity. And that is, that is what she offered to Shuna. Not just the physical truths. You don't hear that when you go to a sinas. You don't hear that. But that is really the truth. The truth of our hearts, of love and devotion. And who will recognize that fruit? Shuram, because he is the angel of all hearts. He knows what you are thinking. So these are the truths that are offered to the divine. The fruit of love, of devotion, and truth. So, in this journey on earth, our duty is to get rid of from this basket all the hate, the greed, the lust, the anger, the hypocrisy, and all this other thing. And when we get rid of that, then our basket is filled only with love, with purity, with devotion, with bhakti, with compassion, with empathy. And the moment our heart <coughs> <clears throat> the moment our heart becomes so pure, the Lord walks like him. When the Lord came to Surrey, she was pure, a sin. <clears throat> so when our hearts become free of all these impurities, then the Lord takes possession of our hearts. And the Balmiki Darshan said, My Lord, come and clothe the mother man and the moha. My Lord, he in whose heart there is an absence of calm, lust, desires, <coughs> cruel, anger, you know, hate and greed, hypocrisy. He says, My Lord, such persons as are all friends to receive you. Go there and make that heart your own. So you see where the God desires. In the heart, in the heart in which there is an absence of all the negative qualities. So, Sarah now, having Shunam having eaten, 
c'est le jeune saint Si Si quand ça dit qu'elle est l'eau de la she will take her eyes off you. For her, it was the finest that she could have looked at. And she said in Shri Ram, I want to be right up. She said in Shri Ram, she said, my Lord, I do not know how to pray. I cannot even read. I, I have not yet prayed. She said that she has not yet prayed. But all her life was prayer. Her life was based on prayer. So, some people go and say, you know, for this Narat, I fast for all the nine days and then you can solve for this. Nobody wants to know that. The Lord knows the depth of your fast. Don't tell anybody. Never have any devotees spoken to the Lord and said, my Lord, I did so and so. They never said that. You always say, my Lord, I have never done any devotion. And there are several saints, my Lord, I don't even know how to pray. And he says, she says, women are low. In those days, that was how women were looked upon, especially in the tribe of them. She says, my Lord, and lowest of the women am I. Adam was said, Adam, Adam, Adi, Nari. Nari is women. And Adam means low. He said, Lower than the lowest am I. And then Sri Ram, Sri Ram put her in a pedestal that was far superior to all the saints and sages. And I want to begin from this letter. This is what he said. He said, Kama Rakupati Sudu Bhami Nibata. Bhami means lady. He didn't say woman. Woman seems to be a term that brings on the dignity of a lady. When you address a woman as a lady, you put her in a superior pedestal. So he said, Kama Rakupati Sudupami Nibata, Manawa Eka Patika Nata. He says, Listen, Kama Rakupati Sudupami Nibata. He says, Oh lady, listen to my words. He says, Man of an age of practical not as relationship. It says, I have only one relationship with any person in this world, and that is man of age of practical devotion. That's the only relationship I have. And I continue from this job at this passage. <laughs> Your lineage is that, that cool from which you come. 
I don't care about where you came from. Piety, your reputation, Dhan is birth, Dhan is riches, birth is strength. I don't care of your wealth. You could be rich or poor, you have nothing. You are poor, I don't care about that. I don't care about your connections, your accomplishments and your ability. That has nothing to do with me. He said, what I care about, and then he says, but the heathen are the soul, what did I say? He says, a person who doesn't have devotion is like a cloud without water. When you look into the heavens, and you see these high clouds, white, they don't have any water in them. So that's how you use really. But when you look and you see the heavy clouds, the dark clouds, it is filled with moisture, and you know rain will be coming. And when the rain comes, man, animals, and fishes, you know, the plants, everything enjoys that. You see, Mother Nature puts on a new, new clothing, greenery everywhere, beauty, flowers, you know, fruits, the, everything began to expand, to show itself, Mother Nature, in all the greenery and beauty. Life, it injects life. So he says, a man who doesn't have devotion, he's like that cloud without water. But a man filled with devotion is like the heavy cloud without blue water. He continues. He says, So he says, Bhakti he, Bhakti he means without Bhakti. Narasoha guys say, Bidu Chalabari, Dikiya Chaisi. This is where he says that. A man without faith is of no more calm than a cloud without water and continues in his job. <coughs> so he says, Siri, I'm now going to give you Nauda Bhakti. Nauda means nine Bhakti devotion. I'm now going to give you nine forms of devotion which brings you closer to him. So he begins in his job. <laughs> So in that kind of companionship, 
that is the only thing. Pratima Bhakti Santana Karsan. That's it. Dusari Rati Mama Katha Prasad. Dusari Sakama. Rati. Rati is the wife of Kamdevi. See, Kamdevi is the god of love. So Rati also is that kind of love. The god of love, he is loving Kamdevi. So it's Dusari Rati Mama Katha Prasad. Mama Katha means my Katha. You must have a profound love for my Katha, my teachings. Always have that love. And if you have that love, then you will continuously want to repeat it, say it, say the glories. So, Pratama Bhakti Santana Kara Sangha, do Sarirati Mama Katha Prasanta. So, first, find yourself in the companionship of the saints. And secondly, have a profound love for my teachings. And it goes. <coughs> They want to catch their attention. 
they believe that they did and, and sing, you know, in Seville. I was in Seville at Harvey's name. So Harvey's name, boy, he really is a devoted man. <laughs> if a modern man, I can tell you, devoted, that is nothing. But we go and recognize you. You are there. So don't do business for sure. In devotion, I am not like show business. Be humble. Do you even love the profound devotion? And nobody has to recognize it. Who say what well, that is their business? Some people have always go foolishness all their life. So you can't bother that. You will live your life to suit you. But in devotion to the divine, my Lord, I am yours. I am all yours. You know me. You know my heart. So friend what everybody else. So he says, the fourth consists in giving of all my virtues with a guidance act, being free from hypocrisy. Let us be 